What's up folks, this is Clay from Clay's AC and Auto Repair and the Clayway here in Muskegon, Michigan. And if this video is helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my videos, and give me them sweet old thumbs up. If you've got a question for me, I answer them for absolutely free on Clay's AC and Auto Repair under the Facebook Messenger. Hush now, dry your eyes, please stop crying. I'm gonna help you get them stubborn exhaust manifold bolts out. And if this video does end up being helpful and you want to contribute to our show, you can buy something from our merch store, donate to our channel, or if you're broke just like this guy. At nighttime, when you're about to go to bed and lay your head down and go to sleep, put on one of the Clayway Sweet playlist. Turn that old volume down so you don't have to hear this old mouth run. Let them videos play from front to back. Remember, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. So now what we're working on today here in the garage is a 3.7 V6. I'm going to let you know, it doesn't matter if you have a Jeep Commander, Jeep Liberty, Grand Cherokee. If it's got the 3.7 or the 3.4.7 uh, in it, and even the 5.7 Hemi, you're going to have some troubles with these exhaust bolts. And I'm going to show you why and show you how I take mine out when I can't get them to come loose. Okay, so more than likely you've tried to take the bolts out and the nut is just spinning at the top. Well, in most of the situations, Liberties, Commanders, Grand Cherokees, etc., even Dodge Rams, you may wanna take the inner fender liner out and I have video of that. Cameron will put a link down in the descriptions for you folks to show you how to take that off the Commander. Sorry, I don't have it for the Liberty or Grand Cherokee. So if you've already tried to remove them bolts and you're not having any success, when you take off the inner fender liner, you get quite a bit of space and you have some ability to actually see the nut tops. Now in my situation, and I live in the Rust Belt, uh, the bolts themselves were 5 8 Um the only thing that I could find that would fit on this, which is the nut that holds it on there, was a 15 millimeter. Now, obviously we got some welds in there, so it doesn't allow it to go down on there super well. Um, so we're gonna try a little bit different tactic with this because my other side that's now disintegrated uh, was so stripped off and rusty, I couldn't get it out of there. But what happens up inside there is there's so much heat generated this tab is supposed to hold this nut from spinning so you can spin the bolt out of there. Well, we're talking about a decades old vehicle, more than likely. So this is probably rusted off. And even if you try needle nose vice grips to hold it, it doesn't quite work that well because this nut is so short, it won't do it. And if you can get a wedge, a wrench in there, you can take it off. But in my situation, I couldn't get one of them off. So I'm gonna show you what I did it's going to require you need a couple little tools. I went down to the Home Depot several, several, several years ago and bought this Sawzall. It's air operated. I actually have a electric one too, but it was too big to get up in there. So we're going to use that and just cut in the center of there. And where we're going to cut at is right through the center of the bolt. Now I can tell by putting my hand up inside here that this is rounded off and there's no tab, so I'm not even gonna waste my time. I'm gonna try the vice grips a little bit, but I know ultimately I'm gonna end up cutting that stud so I can get it out of there. Now you could also use some heat to cut that if you have a set of torches. I have them here, but I'm out of acetylene, so I'm not gonna do that. But I thought when I was working on this, I might as well make this little video. Okay, so the extension that I'm using is about 14 to 16 inches long. I have two of them. I'm using my Deepwell 5 8 and I'm going to try to remove that before I actually go to cutting it. And I'm going to put my jack on the cross member of the transmission. Also, I'm going to use a jack stand for safety. Then with the jack in that position, I'm able to get up and in to them bolts easily. Okay, with my extension, I come up through there behind the exhaust, 
in front of this cross member that runs over here. Now because I sprayed this down with penetrant before I try to loosen them, I'm hoping to get at least one of them out with the impact. It didn't work. I'm going to end up cutting it and replacing the nut and the bolt. Because I can't see the line that I need to cut once my tool is up in there, I take my hand and put my tool up in there at first and take my hand and go around the back side of it to make sure I'm not cutting into something else. So as we can tell, that's pretty rusty and that would have never came out of there. So we're gonna end up replacing both of these and hopefully we can find one with a little tab on it, maybe a little bit thicker than that thin crap right there. And it'll hold up for a while. Or at the very least, now that we have access to it through the fender well, it won't be so hard to put a nut and a bolt on there. Well, we got them out of there. So now this head or this engine can come out or you can repair the exhaust whatever it is you're trying to do well hopefully that video was helpful and you got that exhaust taken apart the way you needed to if it was please consider subscribing clicking the notification sharing my videos give me them sweet old thumbs up and if you've got a question for me and it's automobile related and not baby mama drama i might be able to help you i certainly try to help everyone that i possibly can remember check down in the description look at our merch store turn on the videos whatever uh, just let me know that I helped you or if I was a total douchebag and wasted your time. Remember, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. God bless and have the best of day, folks.